For the longest time, the Barbarian King was always just seen as the worst hero in the game and it wasn't anything people really cared too much about because the Archer Queen was just way better and way more important. However, over the last few months, the Barbarian King has risen to being arguably the best hero in the game due to a few reasons and today we'll be going over just how he managed to go from the worst to arguably the best hero in the game, so let's get right into it. The Barbarian King was added to the game in January of 2013. 13 along with the Archer Queen and these will be the first ever heroes added to Clash of Clans and the King was the first one you unlocked at Town Hall 7 with the Queen being unlocked at Town Hall 9. So already the president was kind of set that the Queen was better than the King as she got unlocked at a higher Town Hall level. However we do know that in Clash of Clans the stage where you unlock something doesn't necessarily mean it's better or worse than other things at other levels. I mean take the balloons as an example. They they are among the best troops in the game despite being unlocked at just Town Hall 4. But at the time, the game hadn't really been around long enough for everyone to come to that conclusion or realization. So it was automatically assumed that the queen was better than the king and I mean that would be true for the most part. The king was essentially like a tank as he had a lot of health and did just about average damage and at this point there were no special abilities in the game so he didn't even have his rage or anything and that made him essentially like a tank which is how people would tend to use him at the beginning and then as for the queen well she had proven to be a lot better since she still had decent health but did a pretty good amount of damage and shot pretty fast and also shot from a range which was really good as ranged troops really were like the best so once people got to town on nine and unlocked the queen she would become a much bigger priority as she was like the actual hero that most people really cared about and what would truly make a big difference in battle. And don't get me wrong, the king was still good but he was most like a glorified tank rather than an actual hero and the archer queen was also more like a glorified archer but she was still useful enough to be seen as a hero. However, this would change when the hero abilities were introduced one year later in January of 2014 as these would truly make the heroes feel like actual heroes. And the king was made a lot better because his rage ability would make him good for charging compartments of bases and just dealing a lot of damage really quickly. But even despite this, the queen's ability would overshadow the king's. This is because the queen was literally able to go invisible and on top of that she would also deal more damage and gain some health back and also shoot faster. And honestly that made her incredibly strong and powerful and made it so she could easily get out of bad situations or just make them not as bad. And overall, at this point, both the heroes were made much better than before and this was probably the closest they were in terms of strength. However, that would all change in September 2014 which is where the queen would really just become way better than the king. This is because the healers received a change in which they would now focus on just one group of troops instead of going around to various others. And this would be where the queen walk strategy would finally become something viable and it would quickly become very widely used. The queen walk strategy was just so good because the queen was obviously already very powerful but with healers constantly healing her she was able to last a lot longer and this would just let her deal way more damage. The queen walk would really become a staple of the game and it was a great way to funnel for attacks or to just do some nice damage and clear a compartment or two. And this was also just a very versatile attack strategy so it would really make everyone focus on the queen and everyone would try to optimize this attack strategy and that would just kind of leave the king almost forgotten since all the attention was on the queen. I mean the king was still strong but when compared to the queen he honestly wasn't much more than just some something you would place down with all the other troops and all you would do is just use the ability once you saw he was getting low. And for the next while the queen was really the one on top and the king was almost like forgotten with only the pro players as you're trying to use them effectively as a casual player base was fully focused on the queen. And if you fast forward to the end of 2015 then Tunnel 11 was added to the game and this introduced the Grand Warden which would be the third hero in the game and he very much much outshone the barbarian king. The thing with the warden was that he didn't really have a lot of health or did a lot of damage. In fact he really did like no damage but the thing with him was his special ability which would just make him extremely strong as a support. This would literally make troops invincible which was two steps above the queen's 
ability since she could still take damage and the ability only affected her instead of all the troops like it did with the warden. This would allow for much bigger pushes and better attacks to happen and now both the queen and warden would be like key parts of an army with the barbarian king being the only hero who wasn't. And I mean this is a really important point to see why the king was so bad. People were basing entire strategies off of either the queen or the warden but that wasn't happening with the king because he just wasn't good or special enough. And this type of thing will continue for a while where the queen and warden were just getting better and better while the king just wasn't really able to progress forward like that because he was truly just limited in his functionality. However, the king was starting to receive more attention from the pro players as they would need to try and maximize everything in the game and use it to the best of their abilities. So for them, the king was also very important. However, for the average casual player, they could honestly care less about what really happened with their king as the focus would be on using the queen and warden correctly. And then when Tunnel 13 came out at the end of 2019, the real champion was added and this would be the fourth and so far final hero in the game and once again it would further push the barbarian king down. While she wasn't as good as a warden or queen in my opinion, she was still really strong due to her ability to jump walls and also her special ability which would bounce off multiple defenses which was really powerful in a lot of different situations. And at this point, the Barbarian King really was the absolute worst hero in the game because he just wasn't all that special or unique in any way. I mean, he was an enhanced troop that basically had a raid spell plus some extra health as a special ability while all the other heroes were way more unique. And so you can really see how over the last few years, Barbarian King really just stayed as the worst hero and got less and less important as other better heroes were added to the game. However, this would all change at Tunnel 16 when the hero equipment was introduced. Despite all the problematic stuff related to the equipment, this is really what the king needed as his biggest weakness was simply that he couldn't do that much and his abilities were just really lackluster and not unique. So the first epic equipment in the game would be the giant gauntlet for the king and this was an absolute game changer. I mean, in reality, it was basically just an even better version of his normal rage ability but this would be truly game changing. First of all, it made the king massive which is really cool and he would do damage wherever he walked and he would also do more damage and actually heal health and take less damage and overall this was a really good piece of equipment and just this in itself would elevate the king so much higher than where he was because he was the first hero with epic equipment. And later on and I guess much more recently, he would get a spiky ball and vamp slash equipment pieces which are also really good and all three of these pieces have their places within the game and for different strategies and they all just make the king so much better. And even though all the other heroes also got their pieces of equipment, the ones that the king got I think are definitely the best and most impactful since the other heroes were already really good before this so their equipment wasn't as important as the king's. And his equipment would also really just elevate him to be up with all the other heroes and it can very well be argued that he is actually the best hero in the game now with the right equipment. So overall it really was just the king's abilities that had been holding him back before and then with the equipment that changed those abilities he was suddenly way more powerful and way more important in the game. But that's also it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next one.